So we like at Emergent like to define leadership as influencing and inspiring purposeful action. And I'll repeat that because there's not a slide on this one. Influencing and inspiring purposeful action. And, and so you, you, you see purpose right in there and it's this way of influencing. The second definition, which uh, we've picked up from uh, people from the leadership circle, is that leadership is a conversation. I want you to think about that. So we are, all of us are leaders. The only question is how well are we leading? Leadership is a conversation. And how we show up in those conversations determines the level of our effectiveness. Very powerful, right? So we're having a series of conversations, whether we're having it through Zoom, uh, whether we're having it on the phone. And so let's pay attention uh, to how we're showing up. There's really three potential outcomes for any conversation. To increase understanding or buy-in. So one of the things I hope to increase is your understanding of how you can lead more effectively during this uncertain time. It's to achieve, second, to achieve a desired outcome. Or third, to improve the relationship. So I want you to think about those two definitions of, of leadership. And you know, one of uh, my, my kids were asking me, they said, Dad, how, you know, how are you keeping it together for your clients? I said, well, first of all, by being honest that we're struggling. I mean, I had somebody ask me, are you afraid about your business? And, and, and I won't ex say it, tell it exactly how I said it because we'd have to beep it out. But I'm, you know, I'm, I was scared to death when this first happened of how we would make the transition to all virtual delivery. And what was helpful was coming back to purpose and really looking at continuing to um, develop my agility and my structure of mind. So we'll come back to that. So VUCA, it's here. The theory doesn't even need to be talked about. We are experiencing it. Um, so what I would like to do though is now move to this concept. And when I, when I first started thinking about this, this webinar, we played around with this idea of balancing the tension between purpose and safety. That's one of the key moves in becoming more of a creative leader. And I want to be, um, I want to be clear, when we talk about safety, I'm not specifically talking about the measures that you are taking to keep your employees safe and healthy. We, we need to be constantly mindful of that through this process. What we're exploring here is the tension between um, being part of something great, which is purposeful, your mission statement, great opportunity for organizations to come back to why they're in business, but at the end of the day, we still need to pay the mortgage. And so as we think about how we're showing up, we want to be mindful of, of, of this tension that does exist between purpose and safety. And um, you know, if we ignore safety, we put purpose at risk, right? If we ignore safety, we put purpose at risk. Um, however, if we focus too much on safety, protecting ourselves, uh, playing it small, playing it safe, then we also put our purpose at risk. Uh, some of you have read Simon Sinek, uh, great leaders start with why. So why is our purpose? Why are we in business? Uh, you know, what is our mission? And so the key is to balance that tension between safety and purpose. It's, it's one of the key moves to being agile during these very uncertain times. Um, I think it's kind of interesting, um, you know, no organization or individual has ever become great by playing it safe. And so as we think about, as we continue to lead through this uh, uh, crisis, this pandemic, we need to kind of come back to why we're in business and really focusing on that tension between purpose and safety. I'm gonna, we're gonna move into um, one of four reflection questions. And, and Lisa talked about this. This is where I would like, uh, you know, we can interact with the chat a little bit. I can be the voice of, um, of each one of you, but I wanna set this up 
I want to give you a chance to kind of reflect on how you've been showing up as a leader uh, of your families, of your organizations, in your communities the last six or seven weeks. One of the things that we all need to be aware of is that we have default behaviors during times of high stress. Sometimes we're aware or conscious of those default behaviors, and sometimes they just go into automatic. And um, these default behaviors are often three different ways of playing it safe. And, and so you can see them some listed here, you know, complying, uh, fitting in, pleasing, you know, doing things, not rocking the boat because I'm a little uncertain of, of, of my future, right? So that can be a version of playing it safe. Protecting, protecting your image, protecting your place. But, but again, that might be tension leading more towards playing it safe, playing it small, as opposed to really uh, playing larger and on purpose. And, and thirdly, controlling you know, taking over, willfully making it happen. And, and so, you know, each one of these behaviors, which are referred to as reactive behaviors, can be useful. But if they're overplayed, and they have the tendency of being overplayed during times of crisis, uh, it can actually cause us to take our eye off the ball and, and not allow our people to get back on mission. And, and so I'd like to uh, pose reflection question number one. And if you have something to write with, uh, I'm going to give uh, about a minute, minute and a half on this. This is the part that makes it interactive. I can actually be your voice to the rest of the group uh, through the chat. But here's question one. What are you noticing? And I was going to say really noticing about yourself in your default behaviors over the last six weeks. Um, you know, I, I've been asking people how they're doing, and, but I've been asking, how are you really doing? You know, I, don't give me the pat answer. And so as you think about this, what are you noticing? And you may be noticing some very positive things about your behavior. But so take a few minutes, take a, take, we'll take about a minute and a half. And I'm gonna ask uh, to, um, I'm just trying to find the chat here. If you can, you, you can use the, uh, the chat and I can be your voice uh, if we have some comments and I can share. And use of the chat is a way of connecting you with the rest of the group. So I went too far there. So we're back to that question. So what are you noticing about yourself in your default behaviors over the last six weeks. Just take another minute to reflect on that. About another 30 seconds. Um, this is mostly for you. The reason I'm asking uh, for the sharing is so that we can create that connection in learning. So this is from Mark, uh, evolution, control, giving way to vulnerability, being excessively human, right? Some people hyperworking, some procrastination, just notice it. And self-forgiveness is key here when you notice something to, to lean into it. Trying to let go from Lynn of what I can't control but there's so much, it, it can be overwhelming. Uh, Kirk uh, shares behaviors ebb and flow. Difficult to ma maintain consistency as my own personal mental state fluctuates. Absolutely, how could it not? Uh, Kevin shares that my world has gotten smaller and it irritates me, right? It ticks you off. You wanna be able to kind of really step out and do those great things. Ken shares it very focused and engaged in ways I haven't been for in years. You know, it does provide the opportunity for deeper connection. Uh, another person said, I've been trying to do actual things to help others, uh, helping neighbors, getting groceries, donating. 
uh, Benifer shares, I have, uh, I have to keep reminding myself not to judge my every move. Yeah, be kind to yourself. And there's a number, excellent job. We'll continue to, to, to use the chat throughout, but this is an opportunity for uh, self-awareness. So that was, you know, question one. Notice it, that which we notice, that which we are conscious and aware of is the first step in transformation. Um, so appreciate that. Very insightful. Thank you for the the chat. I think it gives other participants things to, to uh, consider uh, as we move through the presentation. The title was Leading with Agility and Purpose, and so I decided that we would uh, talk about uh, purpose first. And I went back to a book that I read back in 1988 man's search for meaning and some of you on the call have read this but this this was an in influence of a lot of my early years in leadership development working for the franklin covey organization and, and you know victor frankel was uh you know prisoner of war in in the war camps and he would find meaning in suffering and you know as we think about this idea of sense of purpose I said this earlier in the call, it's remembering why we're in business, why we do what we do as an organization and as individuals. And, and Frankel would say, to live is to suffer, to survive is to find meaning in that suffering. And I, and I would posit to you that rallying around your organization's purpose, your why, your mission, is what will take us out of this thing and in hopefully in many instances better than when we went into it. Um, Frankel quotes Nietzsche, he, he who has a why to live can bear with almost any how. I wanna frame this. I think why you're in business certainly has not changed. And this is the time to come back to organizational purpose. What you do may or may not have changed. What we certainly know is changing and why we need to be more agile is how we do it. How we do it in this current environment, how we will reintegrate people back into the workforce safely and productively. That becomes why we need to anchor back to our core sense of purpose. Um, before I give you the second reflection question, um, I want to share something. We, we have a one client that uh, probably a year ago put out a beautiful uh, video around their organization's purpose. It was very well done. It was actually done uh, locally. Um, and uh, it was about a minute, 50 seconds. And I asked them the question, how often do they use that to start meetings? And uh, I've asked a couple of people that work there and they said, well, we've never used it. And I said, why not? Because that grounds people with why they're doing what they're doing. And so as we think about how we will, how we'll lead with agility and purpose during this challenging time, uh, please take a minute or two to reflect on question two. What is your organization's purpose? And how have you been communicating that or using that to help people get through this challenging situation? I think this is a great opportunity to use the concept of a mastermind group. So let's take a, about a minute and a half. Um, I am keeping the timer in my head. By the way, I realized I don't need a clock anymore. Um, so I'm just going to trust the 90 seconds. But populate the chat. You don't have to limit yourself to these two questions. I had a, had a leadership coaching call this morning and uh, the client, I, I practiced some of my material, by the way, um, did a little dry run. Client liked this question. He said, geez, I gotta, I gotta get our purpose statement and then I'm gonna see how I can use it to rally the troops in moving our organization forward.
So here's one uh, purpose is to build relationships. I have been even more available to employees who are struggling. So that could be a personal sense of purpose. To provide uh, students with diverse learning opportunities and to discover their passions. Wonderful, right? Our mission is to serve others. Thank you for reminding me to include that in every weekly update. Um, you know, providing efficient, efficient pharmaceuticals to customers. I mean, this is, a, this is a time, you know, when we think about purpose, purpose is where we as an organization, we as individuals can be self-authorizing. You know, what is your vision of yourself as a leader? What is your purpose and vision or mission of yourself as an organization? And make sure that you're utilizing that in a way to uh, rally the troops. Be kind. Do what's right with compassion. Um, I, I'm, I, I was I'm a little uh, reluctant to share this, but you know, we've been offering a, a number of uh, free programs. Uh, we have a reset and recenter, and um, it was pretty easy uh, to come to the conclusion that we should do that. We've also been offering some free coaching to people in need in our current uh, organizations that we serve because it seemed to be very much aligned with, with our purpose, which is to raise the consciousness of leaders and organizations so that everyone that is part of their organization can contribute to their fullest potential. Um, and it just seemed to be the right thing to do. And I will tell you, I, I have never felt more alive than when I have been doing those short 15 minute uh, reset and recenter to get people uh, maybe setting the proper tone for their day. Um, so let's continue uh, our, our discussion. I appreciate again the, the thoughtfulness. You know, think about how you will not only use your personal purpose, uh, but also the organizational purpose to rally your troops in, in, in ways that perhaps they have not been rallied before. And uh, the, the comments keep coming in, which uh, I very much appreciate. Uh, I'm just going to take a drink of water. So give me a, give me a minute. I woke up today. Uh, I've been sleeping in, actually. I've been experimenting with uh, sleep. I used to get up at three in the morning. Don't judge me. Um, and then I moved it out. I was actually sleeping in until 630. But today I was up at five, really excited about uh, the opportunity of seeing how this would go. So far, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Hopefully you are as well. And again, here's where we're driving. We're driving towards coming away with one or two things that you could use to uh, continue. And I think the, uh, the word is continue. You've all done great work thus far to continue to lead with agility and purpose. So with that in mind, <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's move the conversation to um, what agility is. I hope you like my slides. We have, a, we have a teammate who does an excellent job. I just give her ideas and she runs with them. And I think she did a really nice job on our slides today. So I hope you're enjoying them. So as we think about the second part of this title of the, the webinar, Leading with Agility and Purpose. Um, agile, we like agile better than flexible or adaptable, but, but, but just take a minute to, to be with that definition, right? This ability to take wise and effective action, and you can see the connection to VUCA, right? Amid complex, rapidly changing conditions. Flexibility with purpose, right? Connecting to our purpose. So our how has to be extremely nimble during this time. Um, you know, there, a lower level of agility <clears throat> often is represented by an expert or achiever mindset. They see everything as a problem to be solved. It's either or thinking. It's willful reactive behavior that actually can get outcomes but at a very high energetic cost. And so as we think about agility here, we're thinking of it at a higher level. 
we're thinking about moving to be more of a catalyst, an integral leader, somebody who considers both and can hold two seemingly opposite things together at the same time without needing to take quick, massive action. The focus at a high level of agility is on opportunities and outcomes. And, you know, sometimes in the past, I used to think, you know, when somebody said, well, what's the opportunity? I thought that was cliche, but we really need to, what is the opportunity for our businesses to come out of this different and better? What is going to be the new normal that you will self-authorize, that you will be intentional about, that will align with your purpose and that will inspire your troops to purposeful action? Um, and, and I want to dig a little deeper from a uh, leadership development and evolution standpoint when we talk about agility and, and look at the um, four foundational premises for agility. And, and it starts in the, in the red, we'll move to the orange and then to the gray and then to the, the, the turquoise. Structure defines performance. So let me give you an example. So if I have a hybrid car, uh, I'm never going to drive 160 miles an hour in it. You know, if we borrow from system dynamics, structure defines performance. So if we think about ourselves as leaders, you are structure. How you think about things, your internal operating system, your beliefs, your assumptions, that is the structure of your leadership. Third foundational principle, consciousness or awareness, AF, I like that one. I'll keep it, I'll keep it clean. Consciousness is the operating system of performance. We go back to the first reflective question. We need to become highly aware of how we were, are showing up in this situation and how we might want to show up differently. Remember that patterns of behavior are driven by habits of thought. And, and so to the extent that we can be more conscious of that operating system, we can affect the performance of ourselves and our organizations in a very, very positive way. The last box, and this is critical, in order to achieve high performance during this crisis or after, we must be restructured. We must be open to change. Yeah, you know, I've been, I've been uh, really working with uh, this idea of how do you reintegrate back into the new normal? And um, I got to tell you, some people aren't going to be crazy about going back to work. If you haven't already heard that, they're working already very effectively remotely. What's your agility going to be? What, what is your um, consciousness? What's your belief, your assumption about how work gets done, right? Work used to be a place that we went to physically. Now we're realizing it's what we do regar regardless of where we reside. And how agile will you be as a leader? How agile will your organization be to take full advantage of the improvements that people have realized through the social distancing process? Uh, I, I think it, it is incredibly opportunistic and also potentially overwhelming as to how we would manage that. And so with that in mind, um, let's move to the third uh, question. I was going to rewrite this because it was a little clunky. I think when I first wrote it, I liked it and then I didn't like it. But this is a self-reflection question. And, and self-reflection is the key to changing your structure of mind. So what restructuring of your thinking do you need to make to ensure that your organization can continue to achieve outcomes that matter most. And I want to give you a simple one. Um, you know, this idea, you know, I'm in the, we're in the people business. The, uh, I actually own two businesses. I own a gym, uh, high touch businesses, face-to-face -face businesses. My wife said, 
All I actually need to do is own a restaurant, and then I'd have the trifecta. I've had all kinds of businesses that couldn't really operate effectively in a social distancing environment. But, you know, I need to restructure my thinking of what it takes to be effective in this new environment. I mean, we're, I'm pushing myself on using technology. Uh, we're converting all, uh, many of our training courses to be delivered, not just delivered, but delivered effectively through the use of technology. Soon we'll have a studio built and I will be, uh, I'm a little less animated because I've got my butt in a chair today. I like to move. I commit all of the uh, public speaking faux pas in, 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 a, in a very uh, interesting way. I'm gonna have to change my thinking. And if you're stuck that good work can only happen if everybody is physically there, that could be a restructuring that you need. So I'll stop talking because you can't reflect with someone talking. I would like to hear, this, is, this now becomes a push for being more agile, for coming out of this thing better, for not just returning to how it used to be. And it looks like things are coming in right now, so I'll go to the chat. From Mark, release historical processes, let it go. Be curious as to the range of possibilities. Raise awareness when I sense a bias creeping in my thoughts. The wonderful response. We must restructure how we are delivering patient care while still balancing the financial realities. You see the tension there between purpose and safety, right? We still gotta pay the bills, we're still running a business. Increase experimentation. <laughs> Take small risks to achieve bigger returns. So keep thinking about, I'll leave, the, I'll leave this one open for a minute. I'll uh, again, you know, question uh, three, we're really looking at um, what restructuring of our thinking do we need to make to ensure that we can continue to achieve outcomes that matter most. We are moving all of our training online so those who can't come into the office will be able to receive services. This will continue even when we're back in the office. Wonderful. So that you can see a shift in thinking. To be more aware of how the actions we take affect the culture of organization. Do our decisions reflect the organization we want to be? That could be your current purpose or maybe that's your future purpose. Sometimes the impact of what we uh, uh, do can only be felt in person when you can look into the eyes. And I think certainly this is, this is both and. Uh, it's not one or the other. And it's really the best of all worlds that we can integrate going forward. Restructuring collaborative uh, creative processes so that, we, uh, so that it can be accomplished outside of being physically present. People need human contact and connection. You can build community virtually, but it's a different effort and intention. Absolutely. And Zoom alone can't substitute. Uh, if you're looking at me right now, uh, you're absolutely correct who said that. Uh, look at me, not just at my head, because I don't want to be a talking head, but I want you to look at me, look past me, kind of on either side of my head, below my ear, and at my heart up, three points of attention. Look at me more holistically because while we're still working virtually and with some social distancing, there are ways to create that connection, but certainly there is no replacement for in-person stuff. Um, I missed a couple as the, at the Zoom, so I apologize if I missed yours. It wasn't, I was not editing. I just simply couldn't keep up. By distancing how we will be changing our human environment long term, what impact will that have on the future? I think that's a wonderful setup for uh, some trends. We've got two, two last things to, to cover. I want to take a look at some emerging trends, and this is some information that uh, was passed to me uh, from one of our clients. Uh, 
from uh, some research that McKinsey and company has been doing. I think it's, it's interesting as we think about what the new normal will be for us, let's begin to think about some of these emerging trends. And I am gonna reference this article from, from McKinsey and company a couple times, but let's, let's take a look at those trends. Then we'll end with, uh, I think I got too cute with this, my kids told me, um, emerging eight essential experiments. It's kind of the call to action, but uh, we've got some food for thought. As you go back into the new normal, here are emergence eight essential experiments to consider. We're gonna ask you to pick one or two to focus on. But before we do that, let's look at these trends. Distance is back, ladies and gentlemen, like it or not, right? In dealing with this pandemic, governments around the world have imposed restrictions on people goods of a severity not seen for decades. That's happening. You're aware of it's happening. You're more aware of it depending on what business or what landscape. So distance is definitely back. We need more and more resilience. And you can make the connection of resilience to agility. Raising the bar, we like to say at Emergent. Raising the bar right? It's the bounce ahead rate for bar. So we come out of this thing better because of what we've learned and how we've applied it. And, and, and what resilience is, is preparing for and recovering from setbacks and experiences. So even when uh, lockdown restrictions begin to ease, businesses will still need to figure out how to operate in new ways. You're, you're already doing that. In short, resiliency, the ability to absorb a shock and come out of it better because we learned uh, better than the competition will be key to the sur to survival and long-term prosperity. There's no question. We need to be more and more resilient. So remember your restorative practices, both individually and collectively. <laughs> uh, we were already moving in this direction, but we are certainly moving uh, to the more of a contact-free economy. You've seen it, digital commerce, right? Ask a kid under 30 for cash. They, they're, they're not carrying any money, right? Digital commerce. Telemedicine. I had my lat, I was supposed to go in for a chemo treatment in early um, April, which, which got canceled. And, um, you know, the, it was a telemedicine consult. We had to make the decision as to whether we would move it. And then, uh, you know, as we think about automation, I mean, supply chain complete, completely disrupted as we move to, uh, uh, how it'll change business, more scrutiny for business. You know, whether you like it or not, um, there will be more government intervention in the economy. People are gonna wanna know, uh, you know, what they're getting for that 10.6 trillion stimulus package that uh, has been provided. And so there will be more scrutiny for business as we move forward. Uh, I think this is obvious. Uh, I love this cartoon. I can't, I don't know where, uh, Tiffany got it, right? Um, in some cases, the, how we do business has already been changed dramatically, but it will be continued to, to be changed in, in ways, but I think mostly positive if we take advantage of the opportunity. Um, and then lastly, um, I think, you know, we actually got to this seminar because I, I wrote a blog called Returning to the New Normal, this webinar. And, uh, and, I, and I realized a couple of things. One, we've been blessed as an organization. We've been continuing to operate almost as if we had prior to. And everybody's not in that same situation. Uh, I also have uh, adult, you know, college-age children. So it's not as challenging to manage my household and my business. So I've been maybe looking at the silver lining a little earlier, but we, we know that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And it often, uh, there, there can be many, many positive outcomes from the coronavirus, some of which people are already moving ahead on. Uh, and so as we, as we move forward, be mindful of these emerging trends, uh, but really be mindful about, you know, 
how can you take advantage? What is the opportunity? What is the silver lining for you? And so the last, uh, last question from a um, reflection, and then that will lead into um, emergent uh, eight essential experiments. Uh, what are you learning that will become your new normal? And you can answer that question from a couple different perspectives. You could answer it from individually. Um, you know, I, I love taking a walk during the day, which I typically didn't do. I love having two meals a day with my family. You know, um, that, that might change. But what are you learning personally and professionally that will become your new normal? Let's, uh, let's take a, a minute to reflect on that. I would again ask you, you've done a great job. I apologize that I was not able to read all of the wonderful comments in the chat. Let's, uh, let's take about 30 seconds. Let's start populating the chat on that one. Although I don't see, the, let's see where's the chat. Oops, I went the wrong way. Sorry. Right. I lost the chat. There it is. There we go. All right, so people have started. So before we wind up, uh, cheers to bouncing ahead. <laughs> Thank you uh, for Mark. Um, oh, they're coming in. Working from home more often and teleconferencing into the office. I'm gonna split my days from in the office and working from home. Checking in more regularly and consistency regarding people's well-being. So, right, that's the deeper connection from Kurt. I love adding in exercise into my normal day hours, and I love being able to accomplish small household chores during the day, like folding laundry uh, while, while heating up my tea. <laughs> I need an upgrade to my internet. I bet a lot of people are saying that. Uh, holding leadership meetings virtually rather than in person. So the, the list, you know, so keep asking yourself that question. This is a wonderful time it's, it's really like winter and spring. So winter is intended to be more of the introspective time to slow down, to become more aware of how we're doing things and how we will do things differently. Uh, so I'd like to uh, share a couple from our perspective and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I won't take too long because I wanna make sure we do get you uh, out of here on the time that we talked about. Um, so here are the new normal, emergent eight essential experiments. First one, put down what you no longer need. We sometimes are carrying way too much in terms of activities, tasks, responsibilities. So put down what you no longer need. Second, if you haven't already done this, do it. Handpick a small group of people, your fab five, to serve as a capable, resilient safety net for tough times. Handpick a small group of people to serve as a capable and resilient safety net for tough times. Third, and if you're not doing this, this, this one I'd push you to start doing, daily gratitude journaling. Uh, I've been battling uh, successfully uh, an illness for the last two years. Um, but after a year of uh, three surgeries and th three or four rounds of chemo, I, I, I had to get another surgery last summer. And I, I was moping around for about 30 days, maybe a little less, feeling sorry for myself. And then I started gratitude journaling, looking at all of the things that I had to be grateful for. And so gratitude journaling can be a tremendous uplifting experience for all of us. Fourth, slow down to go faster. Replace the linear and chronic summer pace with an integrated rhythm of the work-life dance. I like how that sounds. Don't ask me to explain what it means. Slow down to go faster and replace the linear and chronic summer pace with an integrated rhythm to the work-life dance. Fifth, get more sleep. It doesn't start with food. It doesn't start with exercise. It doesn't start with connection. It starts with sleep. If you want to lead with agility and purpose, get more sleep. 
Six, invest in five good minutes of contemplation and reflection at least once a day. Invest in five good minutes. Seven, experiment with three, five, six, seven. No more than three essential activities on your to-do list. No more than five unique events per day. Six weeks downtime per year for vacation and continuing education in level seven, level seven energy, less judgment, more conditional love and acceptance of the current situation. It's with acceptance of the current situation that we can move through it. Fighting it keeps it around longer. And last, number eight, be more vulnerable and practice self-compassion. So those are the emergent eight essential experiments. Our call to action, pick one. Pick one and commit to it as you continue to lead with agility and purpose. So Lisa, I think I'm passing it back to you at this point. Thank you, Ralph, that was awesome, good job. Um, so here I am going to basically just open it up to see if anybody has any questions that um, Ralph can answer for you. Um, I'll be looking at the chat. I think Alice is asking, um, can you repeat number seven that you said? <laughs> Assuming I numbered them, I could. Uh, yes, experiment with three comma, five comma, six comma, seven. No more than three essential things on your daily to-do list no more than five unique events per day, six weeks of restoration time per year, which includes vacation and continuing ed, and operate from level seven energy, non-judgment, unconditional acceptance and love. Perfect, thank you. And I'm having someone ask about number eight again. Great. Be more vulnerable uh, and practice self-compassion. Uh, two things that I'm not great at. Um, I am conveniently vulnerable when I'm presenting, but not really vulnerable often or not yet. And then practice self-compassion. Uh, I, I got a high bar and uh, I came in here uh, wanting to knock people's socks off. And if I didn't, I would have been disappointed. But you, you do what you do. You can only do, do what you do. And so practice self-compassion. Be more vulnerable, practice self-compassion. Wonderful. I'm trying to see if any other questions are coming through either on my phone or on the chat. So here's your last chance to ask a question. Give it another second or two, just in case someone's typing. Okay. Um, and then obviously Ralph has um, his email address on the screen, the support email address. So um, Ralph, if you could hit um, the slide yes. one more time or a couple more times. How's that? Is that yep. where you want to Perfect. be? Perfect. Okay. That's where I want to be. So, okay. I'm sorry, but one question did come through. So let's just do that question one more time. Right. Um, what advice do you have for leaders who have anxiety about video communications? Wow. Um, well, I think uh, just what you just did, be vulnerable that you do have some anxieties around it. Um, be kind to yourself, but also maybe practice it with people you're more comfortable with. Um, and, you know, I don't know of anybody that likes the way they look. Uh, a lot of people don't like the way they sound. And so I under, it's understandable to have those vulnerabilities. And then I think the three points of attention can also help perhaps. Uh, and, and I think also, I think focusing on the other screens as opposed to your own screen makes you more self-conscious. So if you're a little, if you have some anxiety around screen time, have your screen not showing because <laughs> I think that might help you. 
Wonderful. That was all made up. Thank I never. You. Nice question. I never thought about that actually. We have some good comments too in the chat that Ralph, you can take a peek at when you're ready. But thank just you. A thank you to you and Emergent and the presentation today. Well done. Thank you very much, Lisa. I appreciate um, uh, you partnering with us and giving us an opportunity to speak to to your uh, membership. So thank you. Yes, of course. Um, and then um, just so that everyone knows, um, obviously we have additional resources on our website. Um, the link is on um, the screen. Um, and then please um, feel free to go to our events page to see what's up and coming. Um, we have a lot of new and exciting events. We have um, another and upcoming event tomorrow, which is virtual speed networking. Um, as well as on Friday, um, we have um, a webinar with Upstate Medical University. So um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and our YouTube channel, um, and then reach out to us with any questions. So following this, you'll probably receive a survey. Um, let us know what you think um, so that we can make sure that um, we're doing a good job and sending along what we need to be um, sending along to our membership. So I think I'm just gonna open the chat one more time just to make sure that there's not anything in here, but it's all good stuff. Thanking Ralph and his team for the um, wonderful presentation. So thank you again, Emergent, Ralph, Kathy. I appreciate our partnership and I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Yes, do we. Thank you, Lisa, very much. All right. Thanks, everybody. Awesome.